Hi de ho friends. This one's going to be painful. I'm going to show some graphic images during story time that might disturb some people or the young ones. My best I, uh, advice is just go ahead and turn your monitor off and I'll tell you when you can turn it back on. Story time. Sunday night I was doing some work and I got what I call a rigging clip jammed in to the ring finger on my right hand. After carefully removing the rigging clip, I went to the ER, had it cleaned up, nine stitches, they wrapped it up, they put this splint on there, sent me home with some antibiotics and a pain pills. I went to work Sunday night, did not take the pain pills, I had my reasons. Oh, you can turn your monitor back on, no more bad stuff, I promise. Maybe some language, but that's it. And when I was at work, in pain, I got to thinking to myself, what would I do in this type of situation if I was in the middle of nowhere with no help and no way to access help? How would I handle it? I figured this is the perfect way to find out. I'm still two days after the incident. I did not take a pain pill. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to answer a couple questions before they get to the comment section. Yes, I've told a couple of friends where I am. I do have a check-in time. If I don't call at the right time, they will come looking for me. Two, I know this area like the back of my hand. I've got an emergency ac uh, exit right behind me. In 30 to 40 minutes, I can get to a road and get help. Three, I do have my radio. I can call out. Somebody will be here in a half hour or less to help. And four, I do have some more pain pills to take after the video but we're not doing that right now uh, five because it does hurt and my brain is a little scattered at the moment some of my words will run together and I will get a little lost during this during the situation so let's set up the situation of what I'm doing after I get a drink of water I've decided to go to the hills of Arkansas I planned a three-day trip and a two overnight. Totally off trail. I'm going to hike over a mountain, down a ridge line to a mine, stay one day, turn around, and come back. I've packed with me at least four days worth of food because I overdo it. And then my regular loadout pack weight, probably with food and water, about 35 pounds maybe not including the camera gear the season is fall mid fall like now weather conditions throughout the week are going to be around 70 high during the day at night lows in the mid 50s not a big deal perfect sleeping weather 30 percent chance of rain the whole trip and then a wind from the west moving over to the north at night I'm on day one. I've already hiked over the top of the mountain and I'm down on the ridge line during a flat area, not at the valley yet. I see a water source, water source. I'm going to stop and harvest some water. Situation I take my pack off. I notice I've got a string hanging off my jacket that is driving me crazy. I reach down, grab my knife to cut the string off the sleeve. I slip, jams into my finger. I am now bleeding. We are going into full panic mode, friends. If you ever, if you've ever had a panic attack, you know what I'm talking about. Your heart is racing. You're getting confused. Your blood pressure is going up, and you're going into survival mode. So the first thing I need to do is we stop the bleeding. Not a big deal. It wasn't that bad. We didn't lose that much. I first start checking, or second, I start checking my finger. And I notice I cannot feel anything at the tip of it. And then I can't move it at all. And uh, as deep as it went, there's a lot of blood coming out. I'm seeing a lot of fat. Okay, we've got a, a kind of a bad situation, but not too bad. This is telling me I've cut through a tendon and a nerve. It's going to hurt, but I'll be okay. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. Everything in my head is telling me to throw this pack on and head out as fast as possible. It took roughly four hours for us to get into where we're at. I've got another two, maybe three hours to get to the mine. 
the sun is going down in two hours that, that will hit dusk in two hours okay so hiking out being confused full panic mode with uh what do they call it uh oh i can't think of it right now adrenaline flowing is not a good idea you're going to make a mistake when it gets dark it's going to be worse okay so the little thing in the back of my head saying okay we need to stay here i sit down and rest now we're at an hour and 40 minutes of daylight left which is kind of important i need to set up a shelter We've already got uh, water, not a big deal. Food is covered, bleeding is stopped. I'm still full panic mode, but we need to set up a shelter using one hand. Normally, I'm a hammock camper, but I've decided we're gonna go down to the ground for the reason is if I get up in the middle of the night, reach up, grab something to reopen the wound, or worst case, worst case scenario, fall out and make it worse, that wouldn't be good. So I'm going to get a drink of water right here. As you can tell, I'm starting to panic now because it's kind of, it's starting to panic because this hurts. <laughs> I'm going to stop now. We're going to take a look at this pack because this is very important. A lot of packs do have these. A lot of packs do not have these. First, you want to put all your emergency stuff on the outside of the pack where you need to get to it like first aid kit fire starters multi-tools compass extra glasses and then other stuff such as your poop kit i know it's funny but if, anyway let's stick to the subject shall we even though you may never use your first aid kit you need to get to it two on a lot of packs they have your zipper they have some cordage on there and something on the end of it there is a reason for that, friends. They even got it on the pack. And if your pack doesn't have that, not hard to fix, put on some 550, string that up, you'll be good to go. There's a reason. If you get frostbite, your fingers don't work, you can't open this up, okay? If you cut yourself real bad, you've got blood all over your hands, you cannot clasp the zipper. That's why these are on there, is you can put them in between your fingers like that, or, which I'm not going to do, grab it with your teeth and open this pack up and get your gear out. Now, what we're going to use and it helps if you get good zips. <laughs> is I'm going to set my shelter up now. All right, so we got the shelter. I have my cordage bag. I've got the perfect location. I've checked, there's no dead falls above me that I need to worry about. I've got two trees that are questionable, but that I can work with. And we are now, okay, I'm gonna try to keep my timing good. We're now to an, uh, I should write this stuff down. Should really put out a script. We're down to, I want to say, hour and 25 minutes of sunlight left. So let's try to get our shelter put together and then we'll go from there.
backwards. <laughs> Needed an extension. Not yeah. a problem.
baby.
We somewhat have a shelter up. It will work. Uh, all full disclosure, when you weren't looking, I did add an extra guideline. At the end of the video, I will go through how I set it up so you can take a look. I did use the hand a couple times. It was painful. You probably heard some language. Sorry about that. <laughs> it does hurt. Uh, at the moment now, we have shelter. The situation, anxiety level still high. Adrenaline rush still going. My mind is still playing tricks on me, but I feel better we have a shelter. At night, we can take this down, put it in tent mode in case it rains to keep the heat in. Next thing we're going to do, although I planned on cooking all my meals on a remote canister stove, we need a fire. A couple reasons. One, it's just relaxing. Two, it might get a little chilly in this valley where I'm at and with the situation I'm in, help to keep me warm. Number three, the most important of all, I got blood all over me. I got blood on the ground. The predators will smell that and come looking for the source. I'm hoping the fire will mask the smell and hopefully it keeps them away. Now, I gotta grab some stuff here. I am down one camera at the moment. It's on the charger. You do gotta remember, as I'm doing this, I'm filming at the same time. Not as easy as you would think. <laughs> and it's been a while since I've used three cameras. So we are going to do the trench fire. I'm just so used to doing it. It's just the best way in my mind to do things. But there is... God, that doesn't taste pleasant. <laughs> Putting this all up is going to be a fun task. There is... What's going on in here? Oh, I got more water than I thought. Awesome. I was getting a little worried. They gave me a tetanus shot. And I don't know if it's that or what else is going on, but I have dry mouth. I'm not very happy about it. Okay, so we got our shovel. But we need another item down here I want to show you. Oh, on a side note, using them carabiners with one hand to set this tent up, went pretty freaking quick. I didn't have to tie that many knots, and the ones I did, I went ahead and used my teeth, so they went fast. Okay, we need to get this guy off. We're gonna need this later. For my sleep system, I will use the thermal rest and the under quilt for my cat. Hammock, I will be fine. This item right here is my go-to. You guys all know it, you see it a thousand times. This is my machete. I will not be using it. Why? Number one, I'm right-handed dominant, and I got the most control for my right hand for my machete. If I use the machete for my left hand, it's always just holding it and batoning wood. The problem is I'm under a lot of stress. I'm having anxiety. I will be using my left hand where it's less coordinated. There's a chance I can make a freaking mistake. I don't want that to happen. So we're going to put this little guy away, but use it tonight for self-defense. Trench fire location, right there at the edge of the tent. And it's not going to be a... All right, you guys got to go. I hope it didn't anger the God spirits. I mean, the wood spirits. Ooh. All right, trench fire location will be right here. Yeah, quite a few roots here. Don't like to see it. Okay, they'll be all right. Oh, we got wet sand. Oh, yeah. I like that much better. We're pretty happy. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Shouldn't have done that. I'm pretty happy with what we got. For the fire, we're going to be using my world's famous egg drop fire starters. Guaranteed to start a fire in any weather condition. Uh, fun fact, you can boil water with them. You 
unfortunately they do burn very dirty and will ruin whatever pot you're using. Whoa, somehow. <laughs> Sorry. Now, oh wow. We just need to go get some wood. That's not going to be a problem. Trust me, there's plenty of wood. We got some there, there. We just need to pull it over. We're good to go. Time though, we're at uh, an hour and I want to say seven minutes until dusk. We need to get a move on. There's a lot of resources for firewood out here. I did find some behind the shelter, perfect for burning. Unfortunately, I have to use a machete. We're not gonna do it. We're gonna work with what I got here. Uh, my state of mind right now, I, the adrenaline is still rushing. The anxiety has turned over to frustration because the stuff you would normally do with two hands ain't happening. And when you do go to use the other hand, it's slightly painful letting you know that it's there. And as you can see, it's uh, 69, 70 degrees out and I'm just freaking sweating. And I'm losing a lot of energy, which means my sugar's dropping. So we need to get this fire started. Not a big deal with what I got. I mean, I got plenty of resources of wood I can go pull from later. So we should be okay. Uh, let's, uh, Hmm. All right, I can make this happen. Let's do this right here. Another source of fire making I have is I have duct tape around my lighter. It will burn. I also have the strike force in my pack. So I've got several ways to make fire. Quick tip, when snapping wood to put it into a fire, never ever use your knee. You can throw your freaking kneecap out. Always put it below the knee or in other cases, just find a tree with a V in it. Get the wood out, oh boy. Nope, that had a vine on it. You don't want to burn vines because you never know what they are. The good thing about an egg drop fire starter, you've got 15, 20 minutes to get the wood put in there and get it started. So you don't have to rush like you would if you were using a strike force or some other type of fire method. It doesn't take long. At this point, I'm pretty freaking wore out. My energy level is way down. We've got a half hour until dusk. And then at dusk, we've probably got 30 minutes to 45 minutes until pitch black. But luckily we are on the sunward side of the mountain. I can't think of directions right now for some reason. Huh, uh, how I'm feeling? The adrenaline rush is gone. 
the anxiety level medium uh, the, the pain it hurts I know it's there it's at five maybe six at times I'm actually considering in my mind, hey, let's go through with the hike and go to the, K uh, the uh, mine tomorrow and then turn around and come back, but it's probably not a good idea. I'm pretty sure we got some serious damage to the old finger here. Uh, fire, we're good. At this point, we could probably boil water on it, no problem. We're not gonna do that. I wanna see if I can actually put together a fuel canister stove with one hand and use it. Uh, oh, what we're having, I found these. I don't know if you can see that. I'm down to two cameras. My other one decided to go out south. I don't know what's wrong with it. This is a mac and cheese with real hamburger meat. I think I got this from a DG. They were cheap. 59 cents. I'm going to try one. Hey, we're going to do a cooking with Bob. Oh, I got another thing I want to show you once I get the stove set up. Where is that little wigger? How the heck? All right, I didn't know I had the big canister with me. <laughs> Which means we might have a totally different stove setup than I thought. Yeah. Been a while. Let's try to get this guy open. Putting this back in ought to be interesting. What the? What's the? We might be doing this on the fire. <laughs> oh, there it is. We're good. I found it. I haven't used this little guy in a while. Bad idea. Bad idea. Come on. No lapping. Okay, I gotta try it. Okay, let's do this. There we go. It's freaking stuck. Oh, finally. Jesus, Lord Almighty. We get that finally. All right, we're good. <laughs> Let's get the knife that injured me, shall we? No leaks. Uh, can't see the indru instructions. Just pop it open real quick. What's this? Oh. Okay. This is the hamburger that goes into it. I see what they did. Let's get this little guy started we're gonna wing it on the water I have no clue how much to put in there somewhere I got it. You know what, honestly, I was gonna end the video right here, but we might as well keep going. I think it's past the half hour mark and 
I'm not going to edit my edit it much out at all. I'd like to see you and have you see in real time what's going on. So let's get this to a boil. We'll pour it in, do the taste test, not burn my mouth, and do the closing. Well, crap, friends. You missed me pouring the water into our meal right here. <laughs> the SD card just got full and I had to switch over to the reserve one on the phone. Can you believe that crap? Uh, we're going to close the video out. And then at the end, I will take you around and show you the camp setup real quick. Uh, I have some... Man, you missed everything. Me pouring the water, almost burning my hand. Uh, that's... Oh well, technology. So where am I at right now? In the simulation, we are about 20 minutes from dusk. After dusk hits, we're going to have 30 to 45 minutes. We are on the sunward side of the hill or the mountain. So we're going to collect more firewood, uh, mental state. The adrenaline rush is over. The frustration is kind of turned into anger because I'm going to have to cancel my trip and I can't do the same things I can do with both hands not a big deal at the moment we're okay we're safe we got food uh, tonight after I eat gather up more firewood drop this down in the tent mode settle in for the night I can't tell you right now that I am freaking starving my sugar levels are pretty damn low uh, if I had to guess I'm at about a 70 so we need to eat this and a carb bar then get up in the morning and my mind wants to go down to the mine and check it out but we can't do that we need to hike out it could take us a couple days to get out if, if we're careful the bleeding has stopped i can't feel anything in my hand so there is some damage there uh i do have some ibuprofen i might pop them i'm not sure we'll see that could act as a blood thinner if you ask in the comment section how i would stop the bleeding i'm probably not going to answer you i am not a medical profession uh, any shape or size it sounded weird <laughs> yes we got some frustration here so you best to do your research on that I don't want to tell you the wrong thing I know how I would do it might be wrong uh, how are we doing on this getting there the noodles are hydrating it doesn't look half bad to be honest with you you missed the whole water pour sorry about that we're gonna save that water okay let's uh, all right, let's take a look at the shelter setup that I did with one hand. Oh. Let's start with this side. I found this deadfall. I think it was over there. It's perfect. I found another one, and I snapped it. It broke, and it's not going to work. But this one lined up pretty darn good. You see me run the line from here to the tree. When you weren't looking, I added the second whoops, secondary line just for support. I didn't want it falling. This is, uh, how am I going to hang, uh, hang on, uh, there we go, this is what my knots look like from using my teeth, not too bad, this one's kind of loose, but we're going to drop it later, carabiners really helped once I figured out how to attach them, this is the back all staked out. And I went out this way, then in with this way. Then when I fold it down into tent mode, I'll do the same on the other side. That way it helps to keep the wind from coming in. It's not really windy though. This is something I've already had laying around, full disclosure. There we go. So I grabbed it off the tree, tied it off there. Then over here, tied it there, and went to that tree. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and officially wrap this video up now. I think this is about done. It is done. I should have waited. Oh, that's good. <coughs> Sorry. 
You knew I was gonna do that. Come on, guys. I do it every time. Yeah, there'll be some cooking videos in the future. All right, I need to wrap this up. This video went way long, and I really don't want to edit much out because I want to see how it is. This way is how I would handle the situation. Remember though, this is a controlled environment. I know where I'm at. I know I got help if I get in trouble, but it has given me something to think about. I hope it did the same for you. Uh, comments are always welcome me out. It takes me a while to answer them. And I guess uh, let's just wrap this up and I'll see you in the next one, friends.